Hi, this is Kat with Beta Halik, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a statement earring using two whole honeycomb beads. Now today we're actually going to be doing a really neat little pattern using some of the metallic splash honeycombs. So you can see here by my example that we're going to be making this and these right in the center here are that metallic splash but I wanted to kind of make the eye dance a little bit so I'm using the same opaque orange and then its version of the metallic splash and then I added just one more of those little beads right up there at the top. So you can see that I've kind of laid out my pattern that I'm going to be focusing on. I think it just makes it a little easier instead of trying to like pick up a bead and remember where you're at. So I'll explain that in just a moment, but to complete this project, we're going to be using a little earring post with a closed loop. I have my bullet clutch with my uh, guide on the back. I have my little tassel that we're going to be using for that little pop of color. I have some extra honeycomb beads. And we're going to be using some Toho 11-0 galvanized starlight seed beads in a beautiful gold. All right, so before I get into actually making this, I want to talk about a couple of the metallic splashes and a couple of the other finishes that you're going to see with the honeycomb beads. So if I can just draw your attention up here, I have some of the metallic splash laid out. So we have some really cool black and silver. I love the turquoise, even we have black and gold. Now we do have a lot of the coordinating colors that you can do your own here. So I've pulled out a few. We have a really cool sort of wasabi green, which is really neat with the metallic splash. And this royal blue, isn't it just gorgeous? So I love kind of pairing that together. So you can of course mix and match. You don't have to do the same pattern that I'm doing. There's a lot to offer for those metallic splashes. Now I did make a little version of this. So if you wanted a slightly smaller earring, although I did add a long chain tassel to it, these are the laser etched honeycombs. So these actually have a really cool sort of little AB design on them. And these are in the matte finish. So you can see up here that we do have some in the shiny finish. And then we do have some other colors available in the matte finish. So really a lot of great little examples here. So you have that sort of uh, geometric style here. And then we also have a honeycomb on a honeycomb. And it's kind of a cool little design you can really see with this jet in the matte finish, just how really shimmery that can be. So really, really beautiful. Again, we have the matte and the shiny finish. So there's a lot of opportunity to play around with color and with style and with the shape that you wanna go for, but I'm just gonna show you in this video how to do this exact earring. And then if you did wanna follow along to do this earring as well, you'll see that this is just one of the units here. So it's very similar. It's just, you're gonna make one unit as opposed to building three on top of it. All right, so I'm gonna be using the Fireline four pound. I'm gonna use the black satin so that you guys can see it on my white table here. But to create this earring, you are gonna to want to use the four pound crystal Fireline. So, but I just wanted to use the black so that it shows up nice and easy for you. Now we're gonna be using a size 12 beading needle. And again, this is the size four pound Fireline. The reason you wanna use something that's four pound as opposed to a six pound is we're gonna be doing a lot of passes and a lot of loops with our uh, pattern here. So you wanna make sure that you can go through these beads several times. So I wouldn't go up in size for your thread, but the reason that we're gonna do that is to not only secure it, but to also give it some nice little structure. So you can see when I pick it up that it does have a little bit of movement to it, but we wanna make sure that it stays sort of nice and flat as you wear it. All right, so if you have everything ready, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're actually gonna start down here at the bottom. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our tassel first. So I have about eight feet of my fire line here. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna pick up this bead right here, going through one of the holes. You can see that it has two holes drilled and they go down through the sides there. So I'm gonna pick this one up and I'm gonna slide it to about halfway down my thread. All right, I'm just finding the halfway point. There we go. That's about right. Okay, so about halfway on my thread. And now I'm gonna pick up three of my gold seed beads here. And I'm gonna go through the loop of my tassel. I'm gonna pick up three more seed beads and I'm gonna go through this hole here onto my second honeycomb. Now I'm just gonna slide this all down to the center and this is gonna be sort of the bottom of our earring. 
So you can see where that kind of comes together there. And this is, I'm gonna keep referring to the finished earring that I have because I don't want you guys to get lost. All right, so it's gonna be these two seed beads that we're working with here. All right, so now to work with just my right side here, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up one seed bead and then pick up that center honeycomb there. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that all the way down. And that's gonna kind of fold in just like so. When you're working with two whole beads, I find it's really helpful to kind of keep just flipping them the way they need to be. It makes it much, much easier for you in the end. All right, so I'm gonna pick up another seed bead. And now I'm gonna pick up the bead that will be the next lot of two there. Pick that up. And then I'm gonna pick up one more seed bead and I'm gonna pick up my center bead. And this one is a metallic splash. All right, so again, just kind of flip these around here. All right, and now what I'm gonna do, so let me just arrange that, there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna go up and over this bead here so that I can come down and complete this first little unit. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is pick up one seed bead and I'm gonna pick up another honeycomb and slide that down. And then I'm gonna pick up another seed bead and I'm actually going to go through that second honeycomb that is right there. All right trying to keep this on the table so that you guys can see it. All right. There we go. And let me just kind of center that so you can see what we're working with there. There we go. And now I'm gonna pick up one more seed bead and I'm gonna go through the hole that I already have my thread coming out of right there. So this is gonna sort of complete the first midsection of that bottom unit. And you'll get to see this as I sort of pull it together. There we go. All right, so what I'm missing here is I'm missing my two little side beads. You see that? There we go. So this is my first little unit that I've done. I went up and through and back and down around. So now we're just gonna go down through again and I'm gonna turn that thread around and we're gonna add those little side beads there. So again, you're seeing a lot of the black thread in those turnarounds. If you use the crystal, you won't see that, especially if you do use the orange beads. If you do use another opaque bead, I also recommend the crystal. I only recommend the satin or the, um, I'm just going all the way back up through here, all the way to the top. Um, I do recommend using that black satin only if you're gonna use black beads or a, a dark, if you're using like a dark brown or something, you can use that as well. All right, so I've just looped back around and woven all the way up through my little bead here. So now what I'm gonna do is make another thread bridge there and go down through that first bead. And now I'm gonna add a seed bead, add my other honeycomb and add a seed bead. And I'm gonna go right down through the bead that's just below it there to create that nice little diamond shape. All right. There we go. And now I'm gonna go all the way up through. And getting my thread, or my needle, sorry, all the way through that next bead there. And what we're gonna do is we are going to go up and over one more time. And you can see that I'm just kind of, I'm giving it a nice little tug, a nice little pull every time I go through, just to make sure that we're getting that nice solid structure. All right. And now we're gonna go all the way down through and we're gonna come out this bottom bead here. So this is what I mean where there's a lot of turnarounds, but that's okay. We're gonna want those turnarounds so that we can keep the structure sound. So like I said, it does seem like a lot of thread passes, probably more than what you might think you'd want. 
but this is the second time I've tried this and it actually does make it a little bit uh, stronger in my opinion to do this as opposed to trying to use a, a thicker thread. So take that for what you will, um, but I do know that it is a lot of thread passes. All right, so same thing, one seed bead, one honeycomb, and one seed bead. And now we're going back up towards the top. All right, let me flip that back around there for you. All right, so now the next thing is we gotta get back so that we're coming out of the top. So we're gonna turn that thread around. And I like to go all the way down through the bottom one more time just because we have that tassel just secured like so. It's not attached to any jump ring or anything. So I like to go through this loop a couple of times. I think it just helps strengthen uh, the thread passes down here. All right, so now we're just gonna take our needle and go all the way back up through. And if you can't get your needle through several beads at one time, don't worry about it. Just take the slow approach and just get through as many as you can. They start to kind of jig, jag, and jog. So just keep moving that needle up to the top there. Looks like I'm only going to catch that one. <laughs> So if you were making that shorter earring, it would be the same. So now you'd be coming out the top and you'd be able to create the little crown that will allow you to add in your, um, your little uh, earring post at the top there. All right, so that's what we're gonna start with here. You can see that there's some embellishments, but that's what this tail down here is for. We're gonna get to that a little bit later. So all you're gonna do is continue to make the next, uh, oops, looks like I messed up my pattern up there. There we go. Um, you're just going to continue to make the next diamonds in the same fashion. So I'm going to do the middle one really quickly here. And then when I get to the top one, I'm going to show you how to kind of attach the top portion for the earring post. And then I'll show you how to do those embellishments really quick. All right. So I've just added my little metallic splash one up here at the top. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick up three of those gold seed beads. And this is just going to help mirror what's happening at the bottom there. And I'm gonna go through my little earring post. And then I'm going to pick up three more seed beads and sort of continue going down through that metallic splash one. So this will be the very top. Now you could absolutely, if you didn't wanna do a post earring and you wanted to do, let's say, um, uh, a nice hook or something. You could do this where you'd attach a closed jump ring here. You're not going to want to use an open jump ring. It won't give you the result that you're looking for, um, but you can use a closed jump ring and then use an open jump ring to attach your earring hook. Um, but if you use an open jump ring here, there's a good chance that it'll kind of slip out and you definitely don't want that to happen. All right, so I'm just going to continue making a little pattern here. And I just have a few more here. So I'm gonna continue with this top one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll show you how to do that little embellishment real quick then. There's a lot of options I just wanna kinda of point out, um, especially you can see it now here. Um, that if you wanted to not do the two little side pieces, you can do that big strip that just runs right up the center there. Um, and I also wanted a little bit more of an open weave. This is actually a good time for me to show you really quick. This is the Miss B bracelet, and we do have a full video showing you how to do this. And this just really kind of runs it up and down, but you can just see how they sit together. I wanted to kind of open it up a little bit, so that's why I'm using those seed beads. But if you wanted to go for more of this look, you can just see how uh, tighter and smaller that could be. So that's another option as well. A lot of design options with uh, the two whole beads. You can kind of play around with them and figure, figure out exactly how you want to use them. I'm, I'm really impressed with them. I really like to use the check glass two hole beads. I think they provide a lot of really fun design opportunities. All right. 
So I'm just adding on my last couple of beads here. And this is where you can do the same thing that we did at the bottom there and just keep working it towards the top to go through that loop at the top again so that we can reinforce where our earring post is. Okay, and I'm coming all the way down to the bottom here. And I'm just going to turn my thread around. And this will add on my last bead here. Or my last honeycomb bead, I should say. All right, so now you have a couple of options. You can still utilize the rest of this thread to add on the little embellishments. I do still have my tail happening down here at the bottom. You also don't have to add that on if you don't want to, these little sort of flourishes on the side. Um, but you will notice that sometimes the honeycombs will shift around. So the reason that I do this is that so they don't do that quite as much. All right, so the idea is that we need to get back out to our little side pieces here. So I'm gonna use this thread to show you one method and then I'll use the beginning thread to show you kind of a different way to just turn it around. If you ever get lost, just keep turning that thread around and finding the thread bridge that you wanna use. All right, so we're gonna go all the way down through the center here pull through, and then what I wanna do is I wanna come back up so that my thread is coming out, not the gold bead there, but out that honeycomb bead. Because now what I wanna do is I wanna add on three seed beads and go out to the side and pull that down. And now I'm gonna add another three seed beads and I'm gonna go back through there without catching the first gold seed bead. I'm actually gonna to try to catch that second one up there because now I wanna stabilize it and continue turning that thread around and going through the top again. All right, so now I need to work my way over to the other side. And this is what I mean, you just kinda of keep turning that thread until you can get right where you need it to be. And again, this is why you wanna use that four pound because you're doing a lot of thread passes in there. And I know it's looking a little clunky with the black, but you can just see how nice it does look with the crystal on the initial example that I had there for you. But the black is just so that you can really kind of see what I'm doing. Hopefully that helps on the, on the white mat there. All right. So now, and this is also helping to reinforce it. You can see that it's getting a little harder to get my needle through some of these beads, but that's actually what you want. Just make sure that you're not forcing it too much because these are glass beads, so they could crack if you really force it, force it. You also don't want to crack your needle. It does happen, but you know, we're just going for structure, you know, because these are little, little building blocks, really. All right. And you don't wanna create a thread bridge that will um, kind of break apart the beads. I'll, kinda, I'll, I'll do my best to maybe show you what that looks like, what I'm, what I'm talking about. All right, so now we have this going. And we're gonna go down through and making sure to not catch that gold bead at the bottom. So we're coming out to the side there. I'm gonna pick up three seed beads, go up, Three seed beads and go down and now I can catch that gold bead there and continue to move down. All right so what I mean by creating a, a unnecessary thread bridge is to go from this hole to go down through this gold bead here you're gonna have a little bit of an extra gap there and you really don't want that so just keep making sure to turn your thread around in the best way possible. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna tie off this piece here. So I'm gonna just come up through a couple beads. I'm gonna take my needle and go through the back, come up through, and then I'm gonna create a little loop 
and then just make sure that it ties right in that little notch there. So I just tied a little knot there. Now I'm going to go up and I'm going to just do that one more time. Just for a little added security there and I'm giving it a nice little little tug. You can see that it's starting to get a nice little structure to it. All right. And up through here and pull tight. All right, so now I'm just gonna come in with my little snips and I'm gonna get really close. Sorry if my hand is in the way. But I just wanna get as tight as I can. All right, so that is how to do the little embellishment at the top. So now I'm just gonna take my needle off and I'm going to attach it to my other end here. And you can see that I do have a lot of extra thread here, which is what we wanna go for. All right, so if you're using the tail at the bottom here, we are coming out of this gold bead here. So this is actually a good opportunity to go down one more time. And now we're just gonna weave our way back through the top and we're ready to begin the same embellishment. Getting our little tassel out of the way. <laughs> All right, and again, just add those three seed beads. Go down, three seed beads. And go through. And what I'm gonna do now, instead of working my way over to this other side, I'm gonna come up and get this one done first. Just go down through here and now I'm going to turn around on this bead so you can just work your way back up. This thread is getting nice and thick in here which is again I said is good so just be careful that you're not getting <laughs> it too, uh, too much there. I have a little knot in my thread. There we go. Alrighty. So now we're gonna just go down through, looping this around to the other side. All right, so now we're back to our little position here. It's the same process. adding three seed beads, going through our honeycomb, three more seed beads. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way over, do this embellishment, and then work my way down, do that embellishment. And then I'll come back real quick to show you how to uh, just tie off that thread one more time in case you wanna see that. All right, so I'm just adding my last little embellishment there at the bottom. I'm gonna go through, create another little thread bridge and then we are ready to tie off our thread. So again, just go behind your work, come up with your needle, and then as you get closer there, you'll see the little loop form. Just go ahead and pull your thread through, and just make sure your knot sits right into the little space, and then just go ahead and go down through another bead or so. I think I'm just gonna go through that. C bead there, pull tight. Make sure my work is nice and strong, which we've done a lot of thread passes, so it should be. And then we're just gonna come in with our little snips, get nice and close and snip it off. All right, so I know it seems like a lot of work, but what's really nice is the result is gorgeous and it kinda has that nice open weave to it. It has a nice structured look, so it does have a little bit of movement to it. 
but it is actually really, really nice. So you can see a little bit more on the black. So you can see how all those thread bridges sort of appear if you use the black thread, but on this one, the crystal, you really don't see that at all, which is kind of what I was trying to impress upon you. I know I wanted to use the black so that you could see it, but this adds a little bit of embellishment. You can play around with the colors, with the laser edge to with the metallic splash, but it really makes for a beautiful, fun design. So go ahead and attach your earring back and you are all good to go. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can get all the supplies by heading over to beataholic.com and be sure to hit that subscribe button below to get all the latest from Beataholic.